Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to the moon. I'm your host this evening, Lawrence Ray, and today I am joined by one sole co host, uh, Ricardo Martinez, as Jerry is finally taking a vacation. Uh, and today we are very lucky to be interviewing Desiree Dixon, the genius CEO and co founder of Thunder Games, a Bitcoin Lightning integrated gaming studio, and Jack Everett, the other genius co founder and chief experience officer at Thunder Games. How are both of you guys doing today? Good. good, good, very good. Thanks for having us. It's our pleasure to have you both here. And now what, one thing that a lot of people will not know is that there's actually a secret podcast we have with Desiree uh, that we did uh, a couple of weeks back. Um, it's so secret that there's actually no recording of it because we forgot to press record uh, when we began. So this is her second time here today, but um my memory is that of a goldfish so this is all going to be new information to me because i would have forgotten most of the stuff that we asked so that's the good news um but yeah um it's good to hear that you guys are both doing well i'll i'll get started with a a pretty straightforward question uh and this is uh, for you desiree uh you were at lightning labs um before uh embarking on this thunder journey um, but before that, I saw that you uh, were work, uh, working for Women for Women International with working with blockchain, I think it is. Yeah, working for Women International, working with blockchain. Um, I saw that on your on your LinkedIn. I just wanted to know uh, kind of what that was about because it sounded interesting. I'd never heard of it, basically. So I just wanted to see what that was about. Yeah, so I actually did a fellowship with Women for Women International, which is an incredible organization. Um, and they kind of aim to serve women in like post-conflict areas. Um, and so they wanted to kind of look at blockchain technology um, broadly to see, you know, how it could impact their organization, like how it could help. Um, and this was like a long time ago. Um, so what I actually did there was just like kind of do like, you know, I have a background in consult and management consulting, um, specifically strategy and operations. So I kind of just like dove into like everything they were doing, their mission, um, the people that they were serving. And obviously, like at the end of the day, um, the answer was <laughs> really just like the Bitcoin aspect. And, um, you know, I think that was like Look, I, I feel like I was lucky that I was chosen for the fellowship because, um, you know, it was like all of these possibilities they were floating around with like, hey, can we put like all of our, um, you know, all of our records um, on the blockchain? Like, can we, you know, manage like the food that we share um, with these women or like the courses that they take on the blockchain, the certificates? And I was kind of like, at the end of the day, you're a nonprofit. And, you know, you're not a tech company, you're still like using Windows 95, pretty much. And, you know, which makes sense. But like, you know, you shouldn't like necessarily just adopt every new technology that's out there. So like, but how can you actually benefit from it? And really, it was like, if you think about these women in, you know, these emerging markets, developing countries who have recently experienced um, some type of conflict, there's a lot of situations where the women, you know, have lost their husband or, you know, someone in their family. And with that, like, they often don't have access to the bank account, the family bank account, and that money just goes away. So, you know, Bitcoin is a way that, you know, bringing Bitcoin to these women and, you know, teaching them some level of financial literacy and getting the Bitcoin into the hands of these women puts them in a place where they're like financially empowered and like they're set up for more success in kind of these, these environments that they're thrown into. So um, that was really kind of my role there. It was like six or eight months and I kind of just dove in um, and really kind of explored it all. Um, you know, like obviously like I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. Um, you know, I, I just like truly like focus on Bitcoin and even back then. And so, you know, I did like keep it very broad because like they wanted to look at everything. But at the end of the day, what made sense for the organization and what made sense for the, um, the populations of women they were serving was like really Bitcoin as a store of value. And, you know, to a certain extent, um, a kind of measure for transactions. But, you know, again, like I think the store of value piece um, for these women was the most important aspect. 
Oh, gotcha. It sounds sounds interesting as hell. Like I um that was I mean that's why I asked. Obviously, it, it seems like something quite unique. Like I'd not seen anything about that kind of before and, and it makes sense as well to try and like for them too like when you hear about a new technology you want to see if it's something that's going to impact your organization or help it or make things worse so it was worthwhile them getting you to do that research and it sounds like it was pretty interesting research to do i suppose um, yeah so. and i think we've we've seen a lot of it like people get so you know in there like donors get interested in these new technologies and like expect these nonprofits to like integrate it and you know, maybe it, a lot of times it doesn't really make sense but yeah it was a really cool project um and an amazing organization so i was just glad to kind of help out that makes sense and, I, and i've got a, a question for you jack to get you engaged um so my question here obviously is you're the, the chief experience guy uh the technical guy uh i i guess is my way of uh sort of saying it in a in a in a sort of a jealous way i guess i've always wanted to be able to be good at development and technical things but not not been my forte um i saw that you uh also founded a, another game company i think fire zoo i think it was um what would you say uh has been your experience I, i'd be interested to see like what your experience has been uh with developing non-lightning focused games and then lightning focused games and kind of what your most enjoyable uh, experience has been as a software based developer based guy as a chief <laughs> experience guy <laughs> yeah so as you alluded to yeah i had um i started a game studio back in 2010 which was when the app store first came out so i was one of those guys trying to ride that wave when everyone it was all new just making these games for mobile phones um so uh in terms of like the difference between the non-bitcoin and the bitcoin games it's actually like largely this there's largely like the same uh atmosphere at the moment because everyone's just learning about blockchain gaming and uh, everyone's sort of jumping on the bandwagon at the very beginning so from from it's there, there is these parallels uh between the two industries but they are different like just doing a normal game versus one with bitcoin rewards or nfts or whatever there there's obviously quite a lot different because um if you think about when you're adding value into a game it suddenly becomes a honeypot for cheats and either they'll ruin the experience of people already playing the game or they'll find ways to cheat your game and just like run into the ground basically and then also if you think that to give away value from a game the value has to come from somewhere and that's the users because obviously they're buying things or they're like putting their attention in the game and seeing ads uh, and some users are more valuable than others. And there's this kind of equilibrium to be met where everyone can get a fair share of the value they're creating within this kind of community. Um, so yeah, it's quite a big, it's quite a different, it's a different problem to solve when you put the Bitcoin into the games compared to just normal games, which are just for fun. When you put Bitcoin there for fun and have this honeypot. <laughs> Yeah, I get you. I mean, I, I think, yeah, people are already incentivized enough to cheat in games anyway, without the, the extra value that you get. I mean, I, I mean, I remember, um, I'll say allegedly in case this is illegal. I remember jailbreaking my iPhone back in the day years ago um, and doing all kinds of things. And I remember some guy at school, I didn't, this is obviously how, you know, how, how young I am. I, it's nice to feel young. Um, some guy at school like, had doodle jump, I think it was, and he was an absolute douchebag. So I was like, my plan was, okay, I was going to get a higher score than him just by like messing around with it. So like, I just used my jailbreak software that I had downloaded to just get myself like a crazy high score and that pissed him off. So, um, you know, if people like me are out there willing to do that for like, just to piss off a guy at school, then if there's money involved, then as you say, it's going to become a lot more challenging. People are going to be a lot more driven uh, to try and mess with your game. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, to see that's the main the, the, yeah, that's why like, I'm kind of the, chief experience officer as you put it is because to make sure that when we add the bitcoin in the game is seamless obviously and works really well and and furthers bitcoin's mission and like trying to get it adopted as quickly as we can get in the hands of the people uh, but also it doesn't ruin the experience of like someone who's just playing the game normally so this is like this balance to make sure it's not like just crazy a crazy like chaos you mentioned nfts and we've seen lots of blockchain games with nfts um on other platforms Do, does thunder uh have nfts like in the games is that part no. of it no, no we, we don't have any we we don't have uh we don't really see any demand for it um 
I think because the types of games we create are around, they're competitive games, so they're not really earning games. We call our system not play to earn, but free to win. So it's free to enter and join these tournaments, and it's free to win some prizes. So people are just happy to win the Bitcoin. They're not like, but they don't need to win the NFT to sell to get their Bitcoin. They just win the Bitcoin straight away. So uh, I don't think we get a lot of re requests for it. Um, maybe in the future, if we made a game that's more uh, appropriate for NFTs, like a collecting game, maybe we'll look at it then. But we're very much a Bitcoin only company as well. So we're really moving with the speed of the Bitcoin technology on that front. Cool. Yeah, we wouldn't if, do that on some random chain. We would need to just, you know, wait until the tech was there, you know, Taro, whatever, to- You, kind of you wouldn't be interested in doing it on like RSK or, or um, Rare Toshi, the, the NFT thing on Liquid? Um, yeah, uh, so the, we always have this, because we're a startup, we always have this balance between like growth and uh, adoption of our games and concepts versus like things that probably aren't going to be mainstream, because even that's not quite so mainstream. So our focus is really on the competitive gaming, where we don't really need the, well, competitive and like free to, free to win, like prize draws and stuff. So we don't really need... The nft so much as part of that um but if we were to do it yeah we would use those technologies like probably yeah i mean we we could definitely i think jack makes a really good point like i mean i do think the nft community and um you know the ethereum community do a really nice job of like onboarding and like the ux is really beautiful like you know we'll i think everybody can pretty much admit that but you know, that, like, especially with gaming, like, the minute that, like, something looks awful, like, we, a lot of our users, the vast majority of our users are totally new to Bitcoin. So, you know, we can't throw something that, like, is really difficult and really challenging at them. Other, otherwise, we're going to lose them. Um, so keeping it as simple as possible. So even once, like, you know, those technology, like, technologies are, I don't know, at a place where we can use them, I think it would still be like, okay, does it make sense within the game just like in terms of like onboarding the user? Cause that's really like our end mission. It's just so simple for someone to come play when and now they have Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're totally open to it. Um, once there's demand, once the tech is there, um, it's definitely something we would be willing, we would love to explore. It's just, you know, unfortunately we haven't had really any impetus to do so if you yeah if you, you've got to focus on what's most demanded for by your customers and potential customers and then obviously you know what makes sense in the here and now there's only so many of you working on this right so you know uh, if you had an unlimited budget then sure you probably send people off looking at all sorts of technologies and integrating all sorts of things um I guess where one of the things I wanted to understand, uh, not sure, probably best, I'm guessing this is directed towards Jack, um, but uh, how does, and obviously feel free again on this one to, you can tell me, you, you know, only some stuff or not, I don't know how much is, is sort of privileged information, but how does one go about actually integrating lightning into a game? Like, how does that happen? How does that work? <laughs> like, obviously, I get that w when I play Bitcoin Bounce on my phone, which I play sometimes, um, I can earn the sats. And so it's, it, I'm just I, I try to understand, like, how it actually works on the like, what, what's going on behind the scenes that I'm not seeing, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah, so we have, um, obviously, our uh, like income streams, which is advertising, sponsorships, and in-app purchases that we get. So... We basically work at an average of how much we want to reward back to the users that's like a fair amount that they'll be happy with whilst we still keep some profit so we can like run our business so we have this like balance you know between how much we give away and how much we keep to keep the lights uh, on so when we have that pool of money we divide that into our prize pools we have a different prize pool every day for giving the prizes out the games and the users can earn a portion of that prize pool by winning it through um, a prize draw mechanic. So they play the games, they collect little lottery tickets. The more tickets you have, the more chance you have of the jackpot. So the higher prizes you can win. Then behind the scenes, what happens is, um, just like in a normal game where you have gems as your currency or 
like coins that you collect in a game on, the, on a database when you win a prize in thunder games you will also win like you always have a list of prizes that you've won as well so how many sats you've won it's just on a database stored on date like jack's won 10 sats today um then when you want to cash out the prizes we have uh, a lightning node which we have some funds on and we have open channels to the major wallets that our users all use and they will request they'll be logged into their account they request they want their 100 sats and they tell us you know send us the lightning invoice although we do it via ln url um with, with the wallets and then uh when they send the ln url to us we validate that they're the person who who can get those funds and also that they're requesting the right amount of funds from us and then we send it to them via the lightning network just with a simple api call from our node and then when it completes when that payment goes through then we just like tick it off on their account that this one's been paid off so the little database entry that said that they've won this prize gets ticked off so it's kind of straightforward we really just we just have a list of prizes on the user's account pay them out with an uh, our lightning node gotcha is that is that like a fully automated process uh in in, in the back right yeah 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 it's all it's all automated Okay, yeah, that's cool. That's a little bit more straightforward than I imagined. <laughs> I was imagining like, okay, so every person has a lightning wallet and then like the two sats they earn are getting like sent to them and there's no, channels no, between yeah. hundreds well, everyone, of thousands. Everyone already has a lightning wallet, don't they? Like they've already got yeah, the wallet of yeah. Satoshi, Breeze. So we don't need to have another one in between there. Um, we just like pay it to them when they want what, it, you know. What are the most popular wallets that you guys are seeing your users um Definitely, um, World of Satoshi is number one, um, and it, it's so simple, especially for new users. So um, that's the one that is like recommended a lot within the community. People kind of recommend it to each other. Um, uh, Blue Wallet, I think, is popular, and I know I am pretty sure Breeze is, but like I, I'm always shilling Breeze just because of the like more non-custodial aspect. Um, but you know, that's like something we try and like progress people um, that's something we're like really working on um is teaching people to like you know become like more self-sovereign so going from like using a custodial wallet um and kind of getting towards the point where like they're getting off exchanges they're using non-custodial wallets now they have a like you know cold storage um you know and that's something that you know we are working on and can do a better job um of is just like kind of ushering people through that whole like Bitcoin journey. Um, but for right now, yeah, we just, World of Satoshi is definitely the simplest. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because I've never actually used World of Satoshi. People always yeah, tell me. What like, do you use then? <laughs> I've got a few that I've used in the past. At the moment, I've used, I'm using um, Moon and Blue Wallet, but um, I've just never used World of Satoshi. And everyone says yeah. it's like the best, but I just never used it. Well, actually, Moon Wallet is is we noticed a lot of traction with moon wallet in the past you know couple of months maybe six months actually where it came out of nowhere and it's actually quite a popular one a lot of people in south america use that one right i i like it because it's really good to onboard people they're both i think blue wallet and moon are both really good for onboarding people who are beginners um because like with moon it's like um the submarine swap side of it makes it so that it's not that you know it's not that confusing like, they're like oh i get my bitcoin and i can send out my bitcoin and it's kind of like not that tough to try and give someone the difference and if they mess up they're still going to get it uh, into their balance um and then with blue wallet it's like if you really want to teach someone the actual differences and you think that they're ready for that then you can be like hey here's the bitcoin wallet and you separate your lightning wallet and you can move the funds so yeah i like both of those but yeah i've never never really tried wallet satoshi um in, in honesty, I've got much more to learn about Lightning. I, I ordered Mastering Lightning yesterday off of Amazon, so hopefully I'll uh, I'll work it out in the the coming months. One thing that is um is really interesting about like uh, onboarding three people through Lightning is like seeing how many people can actually understand how easy and quick Bitcoin can be. And then obviously I show people Bit Refill, and then they can see how they can spend it and actually use it. Um, when it comes to your guys' games, that's obviously another way to onboard people because they are essentially earning free money, but also playing a game and passing the time. So it's great. Um, have you seen that, like, I guess, like, what's a way that you guys uh, are working on where you can kind of onboard more people uh, with, like, with your games onto Bitcoin? Uh, is there anything that you guys are up to at the moment? 
Well, I mean, that's like the the first thing is just like, I mean, this wasn't all my idea, like at all. This was all Jack's kind of vision in the beginning. And it's just, it's so beautiful in the respect that like, listen, like this is a game. Everybody's downloaded an app from the app store or Google play. Everybody's, most people have downloaded a game, a mobile game on their phone as well. It's something, it's a flow that they're very familiar with. It's fair. It feels very, very safe as compared to going to like Coinbase or Gemini and being like, oh my God, this is so scary. Um, you know, I have to upload my passport. I have to like take a selfie, sacrifice my newborn. And then I, I have to take like my hard earned fiat and I have to like make a pretty big risk in, because like, I don't know that much about any type of crypto and I'm taking a risk in purchasing this. And, you know, it is a very speculative asset, um, regardless of what, you know, currency you're purchasing. So that flow is just like really scary and hard. And so what we're doing is making it very easy. You just download it, you play, and you earn Bitcoin. You don't have to put any of your own money in. And it's just your first taste of Bitcoin. Like you're never going to come here and earn, you know, $3,000 a day or something, right? Like you're going to come here and get a taste of Bitcoin. And if you come and you play 10 minutes, five minutes a day, you're going to earn Bitcoin. Like that's what I do. Um, so that's like really what, you know, Jack's vision in the beginning was like, let's just give people something that they're already doing, that they're already familiar with and make it possible to earn Bitcoin. So that like first and foremost is like incredibly, an incredibly beautiful onboarding experience that like nobody else is getting anywhere, right? And like the other thing on that is there are no cash out minimums, right? So many games, you say you can win Bitcoin, which you can or win other types of prizes, even fiat but there is a minimum cash out, right? And it's because it's either custodial or it's because it's dealing with like the fiat payment rails. For us, we you can literally cash out one Satoshi. So you come and you have your one Satoshi, we are wallet agnostic. You can send it wherever you want. You come and you win and these are your funds. And like, that is so incredibly important to us. So then on top of this, and I'll let, let Jack um, kind of chime, chime in on this is like, once you're a Bitcoiner, we want you to become an evangelist. We want you to become an advocate. And that's what all of us here on this call and everybody in the Bitcoin community has done is, you know, once you learn about Bitcoin, you want to save other people, right? Like, you know, a lot of people haven't woken up in, in regard to like inflation, right? So it's like people want to introduce other people to Bitcoin and save them. And so we on Monday launched our referrals program. Um, and what we what we call is like sharing someone uh, or getting someone to play Thunder Games or to download Thunder Games. Um, we call pink pilling, kind of like orange pilling, but instead you're pink pilling. You're like asking your friends, asking your family to download Thunder Games because you know they can understand it and then they get their first exposure to Bitcoin and hopefully they fall further and further down the rabbit hole and kind of become totally self-sovereign. So, you know, we've created this pro this referral program by we, I mean, the team, I didn't do much for it besides marketing stuff, um, but it's like really incredible. You, you just like share your little ref link from, from the game and you are, you get like a thousand tickets um, every time someone signs up. So the tickets then, you know, enter you in the, the daily lottery where you can win more Bitcoin. And then on top of that, which is, is really cool, which Jack designed, is that once everyone, um, once the person that you referred starts winning for the next two weeks, whatever they win, say they win a thousand sats, right? You get 10% bonus of that. So you get 10 sats. Um, right, is that right? No, that's, the, no, that's wrong. Wait, what'd you say? 100 sats is 10%. 100 sats, my bad, yeah. 100 sats. You get the point. So um, there's like this, you know, impetus to have those people be playing more and to be earning more sats and be cashing out more sats. So you're not just like, you know, exposing someone to thunder. Like this isn't just all about us. Like obviously we want to increase our user numbers, but like, you know, a download is good enough for us to send you know, that number to investors, but, you know, we want you to, to have them download it, but we want, we want 
them to actually do something with the game, to actually earn the Bitcoin and to cash out the Bitcoin and be playing more and earning more. So that's like kind of how for now our referral system is downloaded. And that, that's like just kind of the whole evangelism piece. And we're just like rewarding people for what most people in the community were already doing. Um, so we're hoping to just like kind of have like, you know, a snowball effect on referrals. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so with the, yeah, with our referrals, as Des Desiree alluded to, we um, we, we set the bar high for a, a converted referral. So normally, when you would have a referral scheme, it's like if the, your friend installs the game, but we set it so your friend has to install the game, install a wallet, and cash out because we want to encourage other friends, people and their friends, to encourage each other to like actually onboard them, not just like download the game. It's like we want you to actually onboard someone. So there's two statistics that you get when you are part of our referral scheme. One is like, how many people have you onboarded to Thunder and they've cashed out some Bitcoin? And then how many people have you orange peeled, which is people who you've had to teach them to download a wallet or teach them, how, show them how to download a wallet and teach them how to use it to cash out. Because when you download a Thunder game, um, we detect if you, had a, you have a wallet to cash out because otherwise you can't cash out. So if those, if you if you haven't got a wallet, then um, your friend has to teach you how to cash out, and then you get this like orange pill statistic. So you actually see how many people you've, we actually track how many people you've actually orange pilled, which is really cool as well because it's a special moment when someone gets their first Bitcoin for the first time. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Uh, I remember mine. I'm very nervous <laughs> using. I think. But I think I was using Binance. This is, I don't know, this is years and years and years ago. Buy my first Bitcoin. Jack, I had a question. Are you the only guy that's developing the games or do you guys have like a team that, that are working on all these different games that you guys got? Yeah, we've got uh, a team. We have um, a few, few game developers, some business people, marketing people, community managers. Yeah, we've got like a proper, we've got a pretty full team now. Uh, it's not just me and Desiree. It would be very impressive if it was just me and Desiree, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah we have the team is like um uh nine nine people right now full time so um you know jack you made it seem like huge um <laughs> well online is quite big yeah no it's, it's more than just jack and i for sure and like do you guys um look for like games like that from other developers that they could like submit like say they want to have a cool game and they want to make it a, a thunder game that pays out sats like is that something you guys do or are all the games pretty much developed in-house right now everything's totally in-house um you know and like i think in jack should definitely talk more about this but um you know it doesn't make sense for every game to have bitcoin in it um you know, it can very quickly become um a losing proposition if the unit economics aren't right and you know that's something that I think our team is really good at is understanding what types of games they make sense to have Bitcoin in it, you know, not just in regard to like making money, but also like, does it feel right in the game or does it feel like it's just like slapped on? Um, so that's something, you know, that we kind of, why we've just been developing games in house. And we also want like a certain standard of quality for these games. We don't want people coming and then, um, you know, winning Bitcoin and the payment like failing. Um, you know, we want that experience to be like very solid. So, you know, this is people's first time touching Bitcoin. Like if it, if it goes sour, like they're not coming back. So, um, you know, that quality standard is something that we also kind of keep in house. And then, you know, we are like open to, you know, potentially publishing games or, you know, what it looks like. But for now, like we're really just focused on, um, producing um games in-house how has um like the the app store or or um the play store like uh, have they treated your games like kind of like uh delicately because they because they have bitcoin in them or is it pretty much the same experience as like uh having a normal game on their platform yeah, they do ask a lot more questions. So whenever we submit, uh, recently it's been a bit more quiet, but when we first started submitting more and more games, they were asking like, how does the Bitcoin get sent? Like, is there Bitcoin transactions in the game? Like all these, every time was a different question. So um, yeah, they they were like kind of, I guess, like taking it seriously and like 
kind of putting a closer look on what we were doing and I guess what others doing similar things were up to. So but now for now it's gone a bit quieter, are they? I guess they're used to we might they must be categorizing us in a certain way. Yeah, Jack so, yeah. is also a genius. He's not giving himself enough credit but like he knows exactly i mean it's like this guy like has the terms and conditions memorized because it's like he knows what's allowed he knows what's not allowed he knows like what's like kind of allowed if you like play really nice and he knows what to say to all of them like and that's like what i when i was like thinking about joining thunder games what i loved about jack was like you know he is not and i think this is really important just in our approach towards Bitcoin is like, we're not like trying to like come and just like tear everything down and be like, you don't let Bitcoin, like we're just like going to like try and like burn burn your company down or like the, the, this process down. Like Jack is like, okay, we'll play by your rules. And he's been playing by the rules for like two years. I mean, we have calls all the time with people who two years ago rejected Jack, rejected Thunder because of like Bitcoin or the way that we are doing things. But like now, again, they're like kind of loosening their their grip a bit. But like, you know, Jack and Thunder is like very passionate about like playing by the rules and just making sure our games are always accessible. Yeah, so it's really a key to like understanding what Apple or Google or whoever, what their concerns would be by having real money gaming basically in on their store and then just trying to design a system that um alleviates those concerns like a lot for example a lot of we have ad networks in our games and um to do the advertising and they're always concerned with like are people just watching the ads to earn bitcoin like are they just literally watching an ad and getting bitcoin so obviously i designed the, the gaming system around like the ads are not part of the bitcoin experience so the advertising placements are still high quality and then when these companies see that we're thinking about their concerns before they've even addressed them with us they know like we're taking it seriously and we want them to get good results as well as us so over time like as i said like two years ago i was not getting a lot of a lot of luck i'll be honest uh but over time because we've just persisted and got to know these people over time they're like oh do you know what thunder are actually quite really good guys you know they're not you know bitcoin only and uh they're doing everything the right way so that's just how you change people's perception of cryptocurrency in general, don't you, as well? Because a lot of people, are, businesses especially, get scared of being associated with it. Yeah, that definitely that um, businesses being scared thing is is true. I, I feel like it's improving in general, I guess. Uh, having said that, you know, this the 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 issues with the the bear market appearing now and all this crap um probably won't help but um and all the different things like lunar's collapse and stuff is is always seems to impact bitcoin um as in with reputation wise with people who don't know uh, much about the crypto sphere um i mean how many uh how many users do you guys have like approximately at the moment like uh if you do, you know actually how many you have? Like if overall, roughly on on your on your games. Yeah, I don't know. Is it top secret? There's or... oh, sorry. It might, be, it might be top secret. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's like necessarily something that we share. Like, I mean, on a podcast. But yeah, it's, super it's, public. It's, yeah it's it's uh, it's it's a, it's a, it's a significant number, but it's it's still small. It's still like for a games company, it's still small but it's big for a like crypto bitcoin company i would say so it's kind of like we have this weird position where like, we, we've got impressive numbers for a cryptocurrency company but not for a games company yet because we're still at the mercy of the perception of the out like the outside world of how they treat you know if they're even interested in in bitcoin games which one's the most popular mm, they're all quite similar i think um, we have like quite a lot of different games with different people, but I'd say probably like the Thunder Bay seems to be more popular with our, with our female audience. Like we have a lot more female players of that. And then Snake is more popular, I would say, with like Bitcoiners because Bitcoiners tend to be like millennials and they remember like the original Snake game. And it's uh, a good, like Desiree said earlier, it's a good onboarding tool for your friends to teach them about Bitcoin because they don't have to learn how to play Snake. You can just be like, here's Snake. And everyone's like, yeah. And you say, well, you, know, you can win Bitcoin in Snake. And they're like, whoa, it's the best, best version of Snake I've ever played. Um, so uh, that's quite popular as well. Uh, but people like all the games, really, for different reasons. They're all different. 
Yeah, they are like, I, yeah, they are like all like very similarly like I, Thunder Bay, I, I feel like seems to be the most popular, but um, yeah. I think that's the only one I haven't tried. <laughs> I should probably give it, give it a go. <laughs> it's my favorite. I mean, I like, I play into, I mean, Jack probably is sick of it, but like, I mean, definitely play into like, obviously the female stereotypes of the games that we have that are like geared towards women. I'm like, these are the best, but I think it's good though too, because it's like, if we have just a bunch of women, although I will say our team is just like very in tune with like the fact that most, you know, I think it's like, it's over 50%, like more, there's more female mobile gamers than there are men. So like, you know, our chief um, product officer, like he is very tuned into like, okay, like this is what women want. Here's what we need to get, give women. But like, I think it is helpful. Like we have um, three women on the team to like really kind of hit home. Like, okay, is this game accessible to women? Is this fun to women? Um, but I think like in general, even the guys on our team are really good at making female friendly or, you know, just really kind of ungendered games. Yeah, it's a good advice. Like you'll you'll notice, like in the crypto gaming sphere, they're all like male teams, male CEOs, and they tend to make like shooting games and <laughs> like racing games. Uh, and there's not really much for women. Like if you just look at all the blockchain games, I bet most of them you would think these are just for men, right? Because there's all male teams making them. But we're trying to really be like making sure we women aren't forgotten in uh, cryptocurrency as well. Because if there's just you know, when it's the teams of men, they 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 just won't think about it. So we've got a really good advantage. We've got a female CEO who um, can guide us on like on these these topics. Yeah, like today it was like, ooh, pretty stars for our next game. I was like, these stars are so cute. Yeah, because we we put in these stars like these star graphics on when you win a prize, and we put them on there. And I was thinking, this they're like pink, right? They're pink stars, and I was like, <laughs> why are we doing these pink stars? And, and I was like, okay, let's because our brand is pink, so we use pink a lot. And but then Desiree was like, oh, I love that. So we're like, okay, yeah, that's good then. Whereas normally, like maybe it would have got dropped because it was just all men on the call. But now we've got pink stars. So <laughs> <laughs> um what one of the things that uh we covered in the last podcast that we did with Desiree was um Thunder's focus on mobile gaming exclusively. Could you guys kind of explain why you made that decision? I mean, Jack can, Jack, you should give your, your, why you made that decision. And I will, I will follow with like why I think it's so important. I decided that it to, to go that route because I thought it was like the, the best way to access the biggest market as quickly as possible was like mobile games. Cause it's, and it was also the way people were using the lightning network with the mobile wallets. Um, and yeah, so I think yeah, I just felt like it was the best way to get Bitcoin from a game to a mobile while it was on like the fair both on on mobile. Also, um, mobile games are much cheaper to build than like a PC game, for example. So it means when you're starting like with a new technology like the Lightning Network, and you don't even know like when we were doing it like in 2019, it was very like grassroots even then. So theoretically, like the Lightning Network could have failed. Like people could have just given up. So you don't want to be like committing a million dollars to this amazing, super awesome, huge game when the technology you're using is just getting started. So with mobile games, you can do some quick games. Like the first game we did like took two weeks to build. So we can build it, test and iterate quickly. So mobile games are, yeah, that's why I kind of went there. I don't know if there's what was your answer. Yeah, I mean, so I, before I joined Thunder, I was not into mobile games. I played like a couple, maybe like really just one. Um, and, you know, but I saw what Jack was building and, you know, when he kind of approached me, I was like, okay, like, you know, I, mobile, um, wasn't like super sexy to me, but then like, I started looking into the numbers and it's just like the mobile market is just like growing insanely. I mean, if you think about just like, um, mo like smartphone penetration globally has just like, you know, expanded rapidly over the past 10 years. And it's just like only increasing like these people who've never had access to the internet are now getting access to the internet and so just like everyone has a mobile phone so i started looking at the numbers you know 
over 60% of the entire gaming market is mobile. So mobile makes up more than console and PC gaming combined, which like blew my mind. So it's like people are playing mobile games more than they're playing console or PC games, which I thought was really important. And then if you think about, you know, our mission is like bringing Bitcoin to the entire world. Well, a lot of the the world is in you know emerging markets or developing countries and these individuals cannot or often do not have consoles or gaming pcs right so it's like there's a very like inherent cost prohibitive nature of like an xbox or a playstation or you know a gaming pc like my god i can't afford a gaming pc right so it's like how do you how do you bring these games to people and Bitcoin alongside of these games to people throughout the world. And it's like obviously mobile because the entry for mobile is like very, very low. So that's why I think mobile games are so important and why like we're solely focusing on mobile games, like from my perspective, because like we can have the widest reach. And if we have the widest reach, we can bring those people Bitcoin. And I, and I, something, and I touched on it earlier was that, you know, also there's just, more, like the demographics are different like still with xbox still with gaming pcs like you think about the person who's playing those games and like if we all think about it here we all know it's like a 17 year old white dude who's like living in iowa or something right like that's just the stereotype and the stereotype is unfortunately based in a lot of fact and yes it has changed there's more women in gaming um or yeah just generally in gaming but like with mobile if you like do that thought process of like, okay, who's who do you view as like a traditional mobile gamer? I bet it's like very difficult to think about, right? Like I know a lot of old people who play mobile games. I've seen so many people on planes playing mobile games. So mobile also not only like opens up like the possibility for like people in you know new regions to access gaming, but also people in new demographics. So, you know, women, like we said, are um, spending the most money in mobile games and are also, um, you know, there's many, many more um, female mobile gamers than, than male. So I think that's like super important. And, you know, if we're accessing new regions and new demographics, those are all people that are traditionally underserved when it comes to like financial access, financial education, and especially like education and awareness around Bitcoin. So if we can use the trend in mobile games with those kind of populations, we can also bring those populations kind of the power of Bitcoin, which I think is really important um, and why we're focusing on mobile. When I look at the general like customer base of surely any and not just bitcoin but cryptocurrency business out there everyone i can think of outside of mobile gaming would be a male dominated a significantly weighted male under 40 dominant a dominated kind of customer base um so you guys are probably I, maybe i'm forgetting something but you guys are probably swimming in the only sort of sea of actually some the more balanced customer base and people that you actually um appeal to and and therefore it's like a really important way to onboard yeah not just like 20 year old uh males into the world of bitcoin um so yeah it makes a lot of sense to to go that route of going mobile only um, i know you're uh your question was rhetorical, but when I think of a mobile gamer, like I think of little kids because my son's always trying to get my phone to play games on it. Yeah, that's too. Yeah, I think everyone, right? Because like anyone, most people, most people um, have a mobile phone of some kind, um, and most of them can install games from the Play Store or the App Store in majority. So yeah, it makes sense that you can appeal to pretty much anyone. Um, whereas there's more of a barrier to entry um, with consoles or PC gaming, you have to have the money to afford those things, basically, that you get often just to play games. Um, when it comes to uh, the actual, because obviously you, you, you explained how the how everything works, basically, with you guys having open channels with the most popular wallets and and, and that it's kind of done on database. And then when someone wants to withdraw it, then it's, you know, ticked off. And that makes a lot of sense, actually. It's a smart way to do it. Um, when it comes to the actual maintenance of that, because I know with Lightning, um, I was speaking to different exchanges that had tried to or had integrated Lightning 
payments. They had issues with like failed transactions and they were sort of try, had to actually work to like balance uh, the channels, etc. This is why I bought Mastering Lightning because I don't fully understand exactly how that side of it works. Um, what do you guys have to do to actually maintain the system you've got? Is there anything that you guys have to actually do on like a daily or a weekly basis or anything you have to keep an eye on? I'd just be interested to understand how the maintenance side of the lightning aspect works. Yeah, so um, it's kind of, we've got a simple use case because we don't accept incoming payments at the moment. We just send Bitcoin rewards payments. So we don't need to keep our channels balanced. We just need to keep them topped up on our side so that it will, um, like the balance will gradually go down and down on each channel. So let's say we've got like five channels open. Our algorithm like picks the best channel to send the user the money to um, fire so that it's less likely to fail because if someone's got wallet of Satoshi, we should send their payment through their wallet of Satoshi channel, not just like try to randomly pick a channel and it goes around the lighter network to when we already got a connection there. So send it to the right um, channel uh for the the for the proper user which basically means like 99.5 percent of all of our transactions are just like go straight to the destination because most of our users have like a custodial wallet or breeze or something like uh, non-custodial but um where there's a hub so we can just open a channel to the hub um so the maintenance the maintenance of these like five channels is simply that when one of them gets um depleted our algorithm will just stop using that channel and pick a different channel until I top it up, basically. So the main thing is simply like I get alerted when the channel is depleted and I just top it up to make sure either, either I will send the Bitcoin to that channel or I'll just close it. And if the fee mark is low, the fee prices are low, I'll just close it and open a new one, depending on how I feel. <laughs> if I feel like, oh, well, I want to have a bigger channel to this one, actually, so I'll close it today and open a new one because it's not very expensive. So there's not really a lot of maintenance. It's just simply um, topping up a channel or closing one um, because we the, it would be more complicated if we needed to rebalance channels, um, but we don't need to. So it's straightforward for us. Uh, you, you mentioned you started uh, building Lightning games in like 2019, and that was like when Lightning was still considered reckless. Um, how has uh, your experience improved as as the Lightning networks matured? um so there's more tools to help so we consider ourselves like a self-sovereign app developers basically so uh we really believe that in like everyone running a node and to help the network so we that's one of the reasons why we have our own node as well to be because like we can practice what we preach basically we have a node and all of our staff get a node when they join our company as well a lightning node um so um yeah sorry what was the question I lost my train of thought there. Uh, has it gotten easier, basically, <laughs> yeah. to, to build Lightning games so, since the yeah. network's got So started? my train of thought goes back to, when I first started, I wanted, I like this concept of being a self-sovereign app developer. So I started with a BTC Pay server because that was the only way to easily spin up a node. But it was not really suitable for what I wanted because I just needed to use the the like LND. I didn't need the BTC Pay server part because I was didn't have a shop or anything. So I kind of ended up with this setup that was a bit overkill for what I, I wanted, but then Voltage came out and they offered a similar service, but you just, you can pick and choose the parts that you need. So we just have like the L&D node now. Um, so the actual setup to get a node running has got easier. So there's people like yeah, Voltage who let you just get a node up and running straight away. They've got good documentation and good custom support, whereas before, um, I didn't really know what the hell I was doing. I was just like messaging people on Twitter, like trying to beg people for help to explain the concepts. Um, but now there's a lot more documentation. Um, and also L&D has been through a lot of versions now and a lot of the bugs have been like removed. So everything's a lot more like, you're not scratching your head wondering why you've got this random crazy bug that's happened, like which, which no one can really help you fix because you're the first person. There's a couple of times I was like the first person to find a bug. And I had to like report it, you know, so, but now there's not so much, there's less bugs. So it's a lot more stable. Yeah, certainly an interesting kind of interesting world to get involved in lightning, lightning gaming. Who else? Because I know there's different people who are involved in, there's lots of different companies who do crypto gaming and there's a few that do Bitcoin 
Lightning. Um, are there any other companies? Because I'm trying to think now off the top of my head. Are there any other companies that specify? Specify? Sorry, that's the right word. Specialize. Jeez. Uh, it's been a long day. Okay. <laughs> Is it, are there any other companies that specialize um, in mobile Lightning games besides yourselves? Because I can't think of any off the top of my head um to be honest uh, well we're for sure the only ones that there's there's definitely games companies who use like um third party custodial services to um send through their bitcoin payments so for example you can use like the zebedee platform to um process your payments for you for your users or coinbase you can use or open node you can use all to... so there are companies that do it that way but we're the only one who do it with from what I am aware, there might be others, but from what I'm aware, we're the only ones doing it with our own node. We're we're, we're like completely self-sovereign. Um, so because you know, these um the third party services are useful, like are super useful for people who don't wanna like touch the Bitcoin side of things, but then you lose some value because you're having to pay these services in some way to use the service. Whereas because we're like a native Bitcoin company. I've learned about uh, the Lightning Network by just necessity. Desiree's worked at Lightning um, La- Lightning Labs. Um, we we can ke- ke- keep that value in our company that would have been that we would have had to outsource because we can just run our own node. And it's not as hard as you think to run run a node. I'm sure um, everyone in this call will like eventually have a node and connect. And it's like back in the day when the car was invented, people probably thought this won't scale because how can you afford to like everyone have a driver? Like how can you everyone have a chauffeur? No one can afford having a chauffeur. They probably didn't think, oh, wait, what if everyone just learn how to drive? Um, but then everyone just figured like learn how to drive. So it's just the same with a node, I think. Um, and more and more companies will end up like us where they just, as long as the regulations don't kill um, that concept where it's just too expensive to st- use bitcoin where you have to use like a government approved uh service or something but then bitcoin would have failed really because that's not why it's special is it special because you can choose to do it on your own yeah my hope is that with with bitcoin nodes and lightning nodes there'll be more and more of these kind of pre-packaged op- options for people uh, that will get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and easier and easier and easier uh, and take less time basically uh, to download and set up and and, and once you, yeah because I feel like once you get it to like below a certain price point below a certain time to set it up and it, and it's kind of only a few steps for you as a user then you can see people who really don't understand it trying to give it a go and then actually learn from doing which yeah seemingly for both of you guys has been the right way since you're the only DIY as in do it yourself when it comes to running a node uh, Bitcoin gaming company that we're aware of anyway and that was on this call um so yeah it's pretty cool uh, i like the the spirit of that um yeah well, we're, we're we're basically we're, although we're a gaming company i like to think of us as a bitcoin adoption company and we've just chosen our mission is bitcoin adoption and we've chosen games to be that path to bitcoin ad- adoption are like a big dream so we have the, the games we just think is the best way to do that so that's why we have our node because we want to we want to promote that side of things. That's why we give Bitcoin away to free as many people as we can into all the countries and territories like Desiree spoke about, the ones that need it the most. And the best way to get to those is mobile games because that's the games they play. Um, so, yeah, hopefully more and more people will, like you said, give it a go and just try and think, oh, Thunder Games can do it. Maybe we can do it. <laughs> Who knows, right? Yeah, it's, it's cool. I think in this day and age, you've got, uh, and there's there's different services I'll forget about, but you know you have you could have on your phone you could have your guys' app you could have uh, the Fountain app and you could like you know listen to podcasts play games I'm sure there's other apps for like different things and you know everything you do you can kind of like monetize pretty much everything you're doing maybe even what I think some platforms like like watch ads or whatever well there's this uh, I think well Brave originally at the very beginning was going to run on bitcoin from memory but then i think it went off to its own coin um but yeah i'm sure there's other coins that let you watch adverts and all sorts of things that will get you so yeah you can kind of do all the stuff you usually would do and earn some stats for it um which is pretty cool uh you guys aren't really play to earn you're more play to win right yeah i call it free to uh, i call it free to win yeah um because you're not really like the the price the prizes aren't guaranteed in our games you have to compete to win them so it's not really right to call it earning because like you might get nothing technically if you're not good enough in the competition you know 
That's true. Yeah. I mean, my, my Bitcoin bounce, uh, scores aren't exactly the best. Um, I'll be honest, but I've had, I've had a few sats, you know, I've, I've had a few, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I get it. But as I say, I, the, the concept, I suppose, is still there that, you know, like, uh, you can find ways to potentially bring in sats through doing anything. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, in a couple of years time, if you keep on doing it and you get used to it and you keep having fun and doing what you usually do and, Bring in some sats, you could end up finding yourself with a nice chunk of change, I suppose. Uh, go on holiday, take your kids to Disney or whatever it is people do with the nice bit of money they make. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Ricardo, I don't know if you had any more questions, but I know we're running up to about an hour now. Uh, yeah, I have one last question. Is, are, do you guys have plans to, to have any games like where I could play against Lawrence and win some sats or he could win some sats for me? Yeah, we do. We don't want definitely want to go in that that direction. Um, it's a bit far down our roadmap at the moment, but yeah, we definitely want to get into the kind of play, play to play, player to player competitive space. Um, that's going to be a super exciting and fun type of game for us to make. Yeah, that's a cool idea. I want to steal all of Ricardo's money. Put it up, Ricardo. I'm going to beat you. Nice. <laughs> uh, seems like a cool idea for somewhere to go in the future. Um, well, hey, I mean, like, guys, it's been um, yeah, awesome to chat with both of you and, and have uh, to two of you on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, double the people, uh, double the awesomeness in the podcast. Um, but yeah, thanks for both of you coming on. I I've enjoyed it. I found out some new things. I have found out, I think, even more than we did before because we've asked even more questions in our non-recorded su recorded super VIP podcast that no one's going to get to hear ever. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I appreciate both you guys taking your time out of your day to, to do this. Um, is there anything you want to kind of let the audience know uh, where they can you know, find your guys' games or anything else that you'd want to let people know before we head out? Yeah, uh, you know, people can find us at sunder, T-H-N-D-R dot games. And, you know, just go there um, or just type in THNDR um, in the App Store or Google Play and download all of our games and just try them out. Um, I mean, pretty much like there's not a day that I don't play where I don't win some Bitcoin. It's like five to 10 sats, but, you know, I'm going to be on my phone anyways. Might as well be earning Bitcoin. Um, so, yeah, follow us on Twitter. Join our Discord. It's super active. People have a lot of fun. Um, we, uh, you know, tip people for like making memes and all that fun stuff in there. So join the discord. And then, yeah, I guess um, we just have so many fun things that we're going to be releasing um, over the next month. Uh, we have a new game that we will be announcing soon. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm really excited about it. It's very, very fun. Um, and yeah, I guess just follow us and keep an eye we're just going to keep growing and keep building so perfect sounds great well, well thanks you guys um as always and thank you ricardo for for joining me and thank you for everyone out there listening we appreciate you guys tuning in we hope you learned something new today go try out the games it costs you nothing and you never know you can get some sats and maybe on board some people um so yeah hope you all have an awesome day week month year keep loving life keep being happy and most importantly keep on believing in bitcoin mm -hmm.